Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. You can find us at fabricpatch.net. And today we're going to talk about the finishing directions for our Sunshine Block of the Month. Okay, this was one of Jason Yenter's designs. We love um, his choice with fabric and colors, and this was one of the block of the months that we had started a couple of months ago. And if you have been working on this, you'll see that Brianna got you started, and there were only really two classes because this whole thing is just two techniques. So the first class was this block construction where you had your centerpiece, you had this little black sashing, and then all of your little two and a half by, I think four and a half inch strips created this fun little rainbow color here. And all of these blocks were constructed because then block class number two was all applique. So that was where we cut out all of these different floral designs, fused them on, and then in fact stitched down. And we can show you up close, there's a couple of different opportunities for stitching them down. You can hand stitch these down if you'd like them. You can like to, you can machine stitch them down with a straight stitch or a blanket stitch, um, or you can wait until you're all done. And if you are a long armor, you can just long arm them down. But you do have to stitch around all of the fusible appliques because if not, after about three washings, they'll start to lift off. So if you have all of your blocks done, um, it's time to go ahead and put them together. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention is that in putting this up on the design wall, we just sort of put them the way that we thought. Um, it doesn't really matter. Don't get, you know, bajiggity about it. You can put them up however you'd like. They do tell you which one is block number one, block number two. They tell you how to position them so that you have kind of this fun, rainbowy effect. He's really planned it all out for you and he shows you how to do that in the pattern. If you don't like that, if you want to do something different, totally doesn't matter. You can do whatever you'd like to do. All of your blocks are exactly the same size, so you can create a couple of different opportunities the way that you turn them. Once you have your blocks completed, block number one or step number one rather, step number two, you've laid them out the way that you like, it's time to sew them together. So of course, you would just sew, I tend to sew my horizontal rows together first, and then I sew my vertical rows together, but it's up to you, however you'd like to do that. If you want to sew vertical rows together first and then sew that seam, you can do it any way you'd like to. Once your quilt top is complete, it's time to do the mitered borders. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So the mitered borders, he gives you this really cool fabric so that you can come around and it has this really awesome effect. One thing that I'm gonna mention with Jason is that every one of his fabric lines, he does this. He is the king of uh, border fabric. So we're gonna talk about that up close here for just a minute. Um, what your border fabric looks like, how to cut it perfectly, and then how to do a miter. Okay, let's let's take a look at border fabric first of all. So most border fabric will be just about like this where what you've got is four different repeats. This one is particularly interesting because it has this whole range of color that he's done, which is super exciting. But if we were to open this up, what you'll see is he's got one, two, three, four identical borders, which is what's important because on your pattern, you of course have your four borders. So if you're doing a quilt and you have something else, maybe something else that you've pieced and you have a different quilt and you found a really cool border print that you want to add, it's pretty easy because all you need to know is whatever this measurement is and then you need to add your 10 inch width here and 10 inch width here and that's all the fabric that you need to be able to have enough for all four sides. So for example, let's just pretend that this was a 50 inch quilt. So if we have 50 inches long ways plus 10 plus 10 that's 70 inches. I like to have just a tiny bit extra, so I would probably do two yards, and then after I've cut out all four of my pieces, I have my two long pieces for the side and short pieces for the bottom. I'd have just a tiny bit left over and I'm good to go. So 
when you look at this, what you want to do is you want to cut it out the same way. So we've shown this in multiple videos. We're going to talk about that again in a second. So if I look at this, you can see that I've got, I have the white edge up here. So if I cut here, I've got print and black, print and black print and black, print and black. It's important for you to see that so that you don't, you know, automatically cut off this black or go the wrong direction so that every single piece is exactly the same. The other thing that I tend to do is I just like to measure just to make sure that I know where I'm at. So if I put my ruler here and I see right on this edge and I come down, I might stop right at 10 and a half Let's see, because if I measure this, I'm really at 10 and 5 eighths. Let's see, the next one is, probably should get that flatter, 10 and 5 eighths. This one is a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see that or not. And this is a good time to talk about something. Fabric is printed, right? So what we've got is we you have this really nice soft fabric that literally is going through on a roll through a printer. So whether you're talking about border fabric or a panel, sometimes, I mean, you might think that it should be absolutely exact and it should be, but what will happen is the fabric can be somewhat fluid, so sometimes you need to make a few adjustments. So what I probably would do is I'm gonna go ahead and just make this 10 and a half, and I'm gonna cut every single one. Yep, 10 and a half. I'm gonna move some things out of the way and I'm gonna show you what I mean. Okay, I flipped this around a little bit because I'm right-handed. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up pretty much right on that edge. I might have just a smidge of that gray showing because I know I'm going to trim off about an eighth of an inch down here anyway. So my main thing is I just want to make sure that I have a nice um, straight edge right here. So I'm going to cut this whole thing off and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I trimmed all the way down so I have this nice straight edge and pretty much I just wanted to make sure to get all of the salvage edge off. But now I'm going to turn it one more time because again, I'm right-handed and I'm going to be measuring because one other little, I guess I'm gonna call it a pro tip, is that I like to measure with my ruler, not my mat. If you're measuring the width of a block or even the width of a strip with your mat, there's a really good possibility that you're going to be off. Of course, the ruler that I was using was this long six by 24. I'm gonna set this aside and instead grab something that's going to be a little bit wider. It's also shorter, but that's okay. It's just important that I'm measuring consistently because I think we decided that we were going to do 10 and a half. So the other thing, turn this around, that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my ruler. If you've watched me do any videos, you've watched me use my wet erase marker. It comes in lots of different colors and it's my preferred tool because I just want to make sure that I'm paying attention to exactly which line is right on the edge of my fabric here. And so if I take this and I make just a little reminder line, just so that I don't all of a sudden realize that I cut a whole border that was 10 inches instead of 10 and a half or 10 and three quarters or you know whatever, I'll know that this is always where I want to line that up. And when I'm done, all I have to do is just take a wet paper towel or just lick my finger and that mark will come off. But since it's a wet erase, it doesn't rub off until I'm ready to take it off. So I've measured over my 10 and a half. I'm right on the edge of the line that I just cut and I'm gonna come over 
and very carefully I'm going to come over and you can see I have this tiny little bit here that's okay because what I really what is absolutely critical is that every single one of my borders is the same size because in order to get this effect where it lines up perfectly all the way around and everything lines up it has to be the same width if this border is nine and a half but this one is nine and three eighths and this one is nine and five eighths I'm gonna have a bit of a mess and none of these points are going to line up at all so this part might seem a little bit tedious but really it's not it's just something that is going to make sure that when we're done everything lines up perfectly so I'm going to cut all the way down this strip and again this is my 72 inch strip that I'm cutting or whatever that measurement was I'm going to cut all the way so I have one piece that is that say 72 inches by 10 and a half Okay, so here is my first border. I've cut all the way down. This is 10 and a half. So I'm going to fold this up, set this one aside until I'm ready for my next step. And now you can guess that what I need to do is go ahead and cut this off, right? And you can do this a couple ways. What I'm going to do is just walk over to the other side of my table. I'm gonna use my long ruler again. I'm gonna line that up so it's nice and straight. And I'm gonna do the same thing, the same way that I started. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim that whole thing off from that end, just so I don't have to move again. And after I've trimmed all of that off, I'm going to measure over my 10 and a half, which will be right there. And I'm going to cut this one. And then I'm gonna do it again and again and again. Now, let me just tell you something. This seems like a lot of extra work, but if you remember on that first step when we measured, if you were to just cut right on this edge and just come over and cut just right on this edge and assume that that was going to be the same, you probably will have trouble. People who have tried mitered borders and for some reason it never lines up, that's typically why, because again, it's printed. The only time you're going to have perfectly even exact fabric is if it's woven and none of these are going to be woven. So that's why we do this little extra step it is going to take a little bit of time to get all four of these cut, but it's fairly critical to make sure that all of your math ends up just right. All right, so I'm gonna trim this off, measure over 10 and a half. Trim this off, measure over 10 and a half. Trim this off, measure over 10 and a half. All right, so um, I'm just gonna say it a third time. I know that that takes a little bit of time to cut all of that, but it's really what is going to ensure that you have an accurate mitered border that creates that beautiful illusion because I love a Jason Yenter border. He's gone through so much trouble to give you these beautiful options, whether it's his floral fabrics, his dragon fabrics, his fish fabric. It's really, really nice to know how to do it because it's an easy way to add 20 inches in length and 20 inches in width if you know how to cut this border. All right, so the next step is going to be how to do that miter. There are a couple of very specific tricks to it about how you're going to measure, how you're going to cut, and what you're going to sew. What we're gonna actually do, I've done it in multiple other uh, quilt patterns, and so Brianna is gonna do some little magical splicing, and I'm gonna show you. You won't see this exact fabric. You will see a different fabric, but it's all the same. I've done Jason Yenters, and other border fabric mitered borders in probably 50 quilts. It's always the same. It turns out perfect every single time. And um, 
We can't wait to see your finished block of the month. Be sure and email us pictures at info at fabricpatch.net so we can share your creations with everyone else. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to find the center. So I'm going to find the center of my border piece and you can do it a couple ways. You can either go ahead and press a little crease in it like that. I hope you can see that. I'm going to press a little crease in this one. And then you're going to do the same thing with what would be your quilt top or maybe it's your mug rug, maybe it's your placemat, whatever it is that you're doing. You need to find the center of that as well. And if you don't want to put the crease in it, the other thing that you can do is just mark it with a pin. If you were to mark it with a pin and match up your pins. Okay, so once you've done that, then you're just going to make sure that everything is the right direction and you can see that their heads are at the top. I'm going to, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's my crease and there's my crease. I'm going to lay that over right sides together and pin that. Do the same thing on this side. Find my center. Right sides together and pin it. Okay. Then, and I've already got two of these sewn on, so I'm going to show you how I did that. What you're going to do is you're going to mark your quilt top. So again, this would be the center of my quilt. So you can see that I've measured over, and this might be a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure in a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch over. And then I'm going to take a fabric appropriate marker and in this case is a friction pin is what I'm going to use. And you can see I already have my little mark there. I'm just going to mark my little mark. And I do that on all four sides. You can barely see it on that one can see it on that one. This one you might not be able to see it anymore. Oh yeah, maybe. You can see it on that one. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sewing machine and with my right sides together, holding this end and taking this one, kind of keeping this out of the way. I'm going to start, let me point with my little marker here. I'm going to start right on this, on my little dot that I've made, and I'm going to back stitch and sew my quarter of an inch all the way down to this dot and back stitch, ending right on that dot. After I've done that side, you have to kind of re-fuss with it a little bit. It's a whole lot of fabric that kind of gets in the way. And you can see that's why I'm doing it with a smaller piece rather than a great big quilt. This piece I've already got on. I'm just going to fold this out of the way because I'm going to do the same thing. Start on that dot or whichever one. Back stitch. Sew my quarter of an inch down to this dot. Stop right on that dot and back stitch. And again, it's important to not go over that dot, and you'll see why in just a minute. But that's why we mark that is because you must stop on that dot and back stitch so that um, you don't have a little hole there. So those are important. This is one of the most important steps. All right, so once you've done that, in fact, I'm gonna do that. In fact, I've already done that. I'm gonna set this aside. I did that with this one. So what will happen is then it looks like this. So here is 
my little dot and you can see I sewed, get these out of the way so you can see, I sewed right up to that dot and backstitched, right up to that dot and backstitched. Same thing over here, right up and backstitched. Okay, now that you've done that, it's time to miter it. So all you're going to do is you're going to take these, fold this up, and you're going to fold this on top of each other at a 45 degree angle. And it's pretty easy to do because your stripe should line up. And not only does your stripe line up, but this will come to a point. And when this comes to a point, I always kind of unfold it a little bit so that you can see your little dot right there. It is a little bit fussy, but it's totally worth it. Okay, and you can see I am, what I'm trying to do is I'm lining this stripe up. Oftentimes you're dealing with fabric that is printed, and so you think it comes out exactly right, but you have to fuss with it sometimes just a little bit. So I will take the time just to make sure that my stripe lines up. Okay. Just make sure everything is lined up. All right. So now that I'm ready to do that, what's actually going to happen is you are going to sew from this point at a 45 degree angle off. And I always draw my line first and then I sew it then I look at it, then I cut that off. Some people are super brave and they know, hold on, let me get this out a little bit better. And they know that they're going to sew right there, so they go ahead and line the whole thing up, cut off a quarter of an inch past of it, past it, they sew um, on their line and then they're good to go. But I'm never that brave. I feel like once I've cut it, then um, it's a done deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my ruler right on that dot because I'm going to start sewing right there. So as I line that up, what I'll actually see with my 45 degree angle, if I wanted to slide this all the way up, I would be able to see that this 45 degree angle lines up. It could either line up with the edge of my piece or in this case I lined it up with my stitch line. And you can see that I'm a little bit farther than that. I think on the previous one we said we needed 13 inches so you can see that I may be at about 13 and a half or I'm just a little bit longer. It doesn't matter, we're gonna cut that off anyway. So I'm just going to double check and see that sure enough I'm right in the point right there. I'm at my 45. I feel like that is pretty much lined up. Like I said, I think I said it's a little fussy. It is, but it's worth it and it's really um, nice if you get it right the very first time. Okay, so now I'm going to take my appropriate marking utensil starting right in that dot. And that's my sewing line. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and when I start sewing, I'm going to put my needle right in at that dot and sew right along that. I have it pinned right here. I'll be right back. Okay, so I sewed right on that line and again you want to back stitch but you want to, if you're starting right in that dot, you come about three stitches in, go back three stitches and then keep going. And then you want to check 
to see how close you did. And you can take a little look. I might just give it a quick little press just to take a little peek. And there's a couple things you want to look for to see if we're going to call this successful or not. One thing is that if you don't backstitch enough, you might end up with a funny little stitch right there. That's what that's from, is that if I came, if I did my three stitches, two stitches back, and I missed that last one, that's what that's for. If you overshoot and you come in from the little dot, that's when you end up with a weird little pucker. So I feel like I would count that okay, but the problem is that Mm, I didn't do such a great job of lining up my stripes. So for me personally, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just take this, this seam out, reposition it, and do it a second time. You can totally do that because nothing has been cut. If I look at these other ones, these are okay. This one, I don't have any gap right here. I don't have a pucker from coming in too far. This lines up, everything lines up exactly the way that it's supposed to, this one too. So for these, when these are done, once you feel comfortable with that, then you can go ahead and measure over your quarter of an inch. Let me show you on this one. Measure over your quarter of an inch past to the seam and go ahead and cut that excess off and press it. And then once you've done that, you just go on to your last one and you're gonna do it the exact same way. You're just going to line this up, bring this over, 45 degree angle. And again, there are three points. One is to make sure that that stripe kind of lines up the way that you want it to. Make sure that you're on that 45 degree angle and you use your ruler to line that up and make sure that you start and stop right at that dot. So I actually literally put my needle down right in there, come two stitches out, two stitches back, and then sew on the line. And then once you've done that, that's your, that's your miter. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.